All right. Hello, everyone. Howie Jacobson here with a Checkmate webinar. Uh, all these webinars that I'm doing this month are sponsored by Virtual Camp Checkmate, the course that begins on November 6th. Um, that's the reason I'm doing these, to, uh, to give you a taste. And hopefully, you'll find them uh, valuable enough that some of you will say, gee, I'd like to get more. And that's what uh, Virtual Camp Checkmate is for. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that at the end. So this is the, the fourth webinar. I've, now this is the fifth I've done in the past uh, eight days. And I decided to do this one a little bit differently. Um, generally, I work on the matrix and the avatar. I get a volunteer, and we go through uh, a process. What I discovered is, and we'll, we'll look at the avatar shortly. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. Soon you will. Um, I'm curious, though, for folks who are, who are listening right now, if you, if you have been on another webinar or you're familiar with the basics of Checkmate, if you could just type a yes into the question box. And if you don't know what it is, um, then type a no. And so I'll just have a kind of a sense of, of where folks are and kind of how much detail um, I need to go into. Uh, and yes, John, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be pointing out the other webinars. They're, they're getting kind of slowly uh, processed. OK, well, there's a lot of yeses. So far, so if you're if you're a no, if you don't know about Checkmate or about avatar creation or any of that stuff, um, speak up. Otherwise, I'll I'll just skip right into it. Um, all right. Well, it's uh, <laughs> I'm preaching to the choir here. So um, what this what what I discovered is once you have an avatar, at that point you can play all sorts of games to get to to get to know that avatar better. Uh, you can, there, there's, there's no end to the types of activities you can do from, from various uh, acting exercises, uh, you know, the way, the way actors would get to, would play games with each other to, to kind of draw out their characters, to do improv scenes, you know, so in a, in a movie, two serious actors um, might play their characters, you know, going to lunch, doing the laundry, uh, changing attire. Anything like that, just to just to to see what bubbles up from their subconscious that they can then use in the uh, in the film or the play uh, itself. Um, so you know, I, I read that uh, one of the things Meryl Streep does, who's arguably one of the greatest actors uh, of my lifetime, is that when she thinks about her character, she always gives her character a secret that nobody else in, on the set of the movie knows. And that's something that she kind of guards carefully and what gives her performances such depth. So there's, there's an infinite number of ways we can, we can splice this. I'm working on another one now called the, uh, uh, the Daily Review, which I've, I've borrowed. Everything is borrowed from somewhere. This one is called The Arc of Longing. And to me, the word longing is such a powerful and poignant and beautiful and sad word. It evokes so much. Uh, of just just about what what we want as human beings, and and since we're 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 marketing to people, we're selling them stuff. Um, there's a huge opportunity as marketers to help people not just with the the details of the thing we're selling them, but with something much deeper. And just like you know, if you study uh, film or, or screenwriting. One of the things you learn first is that the scene is never about what the scene is about. There's always a subtext. There's always something that's being withheld. So that if the scene is about two people kind of arguing about what they're going to have for lunch, it's never about that. It's about the power dynamics in the relationship. Um, it's about the, the politics of, uh, of their food ethics. It's, it's, it's some deep stuff. But what comes up is the, the shallow stuff. You also see this in a lot of negotiation training. Um, one of, one of the, the books that influenced me a great deal about a dozen years ago was called Difficult Con and so, and, But it comes out in this very mundane Picayune type of thing. So, just just as it can happen in negative ways, it can happen 
in positive ways that when people are looking for, when I'm looking for a digital camera uh, or a hard drive or uh, ear protection for a chainsaw, I'm never just looking for that thing. I'm also, I'm also trying to deal with some of the bigger issues in my life in, in that little way. So the checkmate method, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zip through this. Um, because uh, almost everyone has said they've, they're somewhat familiar with it. So I wrote a bunch of AdWords books. I do a lot of AdWords consulting. And all, the, all this work came out of trying to get better at AdWords, trying to find um, ways to, to reach people in a, in a deeper way than just I would think you could do in, a, in, in 130 characters. Um, because it, 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 it occurred to me very quickly that search is probably the quintessential human activity. It's what we do all the time. It's all we do. We motor through life, and we're always on the lookout for something to make our life better, to make it safer, to make it you know, more exciting. But whatever, wherever we are, there's always a gap between what we've got and what we want. And so we're always in search mode. And what AdWords does is it just intensifies it, and it makes the, the search universe virtually infinite as opposed to the search universe being what you can see around you. You know, if you think of hunter gatherers going out searching for for put at our fingertips and and globalize. But it's the same thing. It's people walking around trying to get stuff. Trying to get stuff that will enrich their life. At the, as, as they interpret enrichment at, in that moment. So that's where it comes out of. Um, so again, the Google search results page, the big problem is um, Scarlett O'Hara, the, the most desirable young woman in the South, is your prospect. She comes to the page, she types something in, and you and all your competitors are tripping over each other trying to impress her. And it doesn't work because you're all the same and she's bored, and she ends up with exactly the wrong guy just because he's different. So the big problem of, of marketing is how do you cut through the clutter, especially when there are a whole bunch of, uh, of competitors, and there's, there's one best practice, one best way to talk to everyone, but everyone's doing it. At that point, the best practice becomes just silly, and I'll show you a great uh, Google search results page in a little while that will make that point just just beautifully. So how do you how are you different? How can you be different in a way that matters and in a way that makes you more appealing? And that is the whole goal of Checkmate. So let's talk about Google for a second. It is the world's best positioning playground. Let me explain what I mean by that. You can Go to Google, type in keywords, and see an entire market come to life in front of your eyes. It was as if you know, Aladdin uh, rubbed the lamp, and instead of a genie, a marketplace burst into life. All these different stalls, shops, kiosks, vendors, and all of them, whatever he said when he, when he rubbed that lamp, that's what it was about. If he said, uh, I'm looking for new sandals, then every single one of the magical um, shops that came out of that lamp would be about sandals. If he said, I, I want a carpet, then all the carpet vendors would be there. So once you see that, if you, if you, let's say you didn't know what Aladdin had asked for. If you just looked at the marketplace, you could pretty much tell. You could see what, you know, reverse engineer the, the market from the marketplace. So you can actually discover your ideal customer through this kind of market insight. There's lots of ways to discover your ideal customer. You can do it because you've been in business and serving them for a while, so you know them. You can do it by reverse engineering what Google says they want and what, what advertisers think they want. And you can do it by just going and researching, looking on blogs, on forums, and see if people are searching for carpets, what do, what do they care about? Do they worry about child labor in Pakistan? Do they worry about uh, is it dry cleanable? Do they worry about how long it will last? Do they worry about uh, is, are children going to be rough on it? Are they worried about can I install it myself? Right? All of these things can give you insight 
And you can find all that just by going to Google, typing in some keywords, and following the links wherever they lead you. The other, another thing that makes Google the world's best positioning playground is that you can see all your competitors in one place. So imagine 30 years ago, you wanted to break into a market. You'd have to go and figure out who all these people are. Whether If it was a local market, it'd be a little easier. If it was a national market, it would be virtually impossible. Global market, who the hell knows? Here, everyone who's competing for your prospects is on that page, and their websites are one click away. So it's a very efficient way to view an entire market. You know, in the, in the past, if you wanted to kind of do that kind of research, you'd pay some market research company. It would cost you $50,000, $300,000, depending on the, the verbosity of the final report. The Google search results page encapsulates that and more. It it's probably represents millions, millions of dollars in a lot of markets of market research that you can just have for free. Then you get to express a position in that marketplace. Um, another word for this in Google is write an ad. So you're saying, you know, there's all these different people promising all sorts of different things, and you want to stand out. So you take your own position. And the way I think of it is, you know, all these uh, these young guys in the South trying to uh, sweet sweet talk Scarlett O'Hara, they're trying to show her love. They're trying to show her that she that they're the one who's going to love her the best. So your ads are ways of loving your ideal customer better than anybody else. Then, once you come up with an ad, you get to quickly and cheaply test it. You're not, you're not uh, you know, beholden to it forever. You're not, you're not tied to it. You haven't spent that hundreds of thousands of dollars of putting it on the, the centerfold of, of USA Today. You just get to write some ads, and you get to test it and see if you're right or not. And then you get to embody the winning position in something I call visionary improvement. If you, if your winning position is actually better than what you got, then you get to change your business to, to, to um, support the position that loves your ideal customers the best. As long as it makes financial sense, as long as it's something you like doing and your customers are willing to pay for, that's where breakthrough comes from. Very rarely does breakthrough come from the mind of the, you know, Steve Jobs, the the, uh, the solo genius who knows better than anybody else what they want. Breakthrough tends to come from observing your customers, doing a kind of ethnography, uh, talking to them, studying them, and then thinking, you know, if I were them, what would I want? And if you're willing to do it, and you're able to do it, and you think of doing it, that puts you in a league above most other vendors. Uh, so. The, I want to talk a little bit about the Checkmate Matrix. And those of you who have been on some of the other webinars have, have seen it, but I'm, I'm going to demonstrate it a little bit of a different way. So this is the, this is the first tool that I created um, in, the, in the system that has become Checkmate. And it basically is a way of quickly looking at a Google search results page and making sense of it. Um, so I'm not going to go over everything, but basically the URL is the, the identifier of the ad, the, uh, you know, the website domain. And then I just listed a whole bunch of things that often appear in direct marketing, direct response advertising, an offer. What are the features? What are the benefits? Is there a call to action, a reason to believe, meaning a, a credibility booster? Is there a big difference, something that differentiates this ad from all the other ones? Does the ad have a voice, a distinctive way of speaking, and is the keyword in the ad? So let's take a look at how this works in action. Oh, before we do, and I, I promised you that, that uh, the website, that uh, the, um, the search results page that shows an example of a sea of sameness. So yours may not be this bad, but if you ever, can everyone see the, uh, the search results page for Gibson guitar? And this was actually a while ago, probably a couple of years ago. Um, it's changed now. There's very few people advertising on it. But at that point, when I took the screenshot, you can see pretty much um, every every uh, ad has the word Gibson guitar in it, except one is Guitar Gibson, and there's one on top uh, Guitar Courses. But you, but you know, if you were trying to differentiate yourself and you said, well, they they typed in Gibson guitar, so I should put that in. That's a best practice because that will get their attention in the headline. It'll be all bolded and everything. Well, you can see how badly that would work. There's almost nothing to distinguish any of these ads. 
Okay, so now let's take another keyword, and this is one. Uh, maybe we we can we can work on this one. Although while while I while I talk about this in the next few slides, if anyone would like to be a guinea pig, go on come on the hot seat, and you have the ability to uh, speak, either you're on the telephone or you you have a good mic uh, and headphones, so there's not going to be too much echo. If you would like to, oh, we have one. All right, Tina, um, great. Could you just to tell me a little bit about your business and who you serve. Just write a little paragraph. Um, so, Tina, are you? Uh, I'm trying to see. You you don't have to call in. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll see. I'll try to unmute you in just in just a little bit. Uh, all right. If you need, you so say you need to call. If you click on the audio, it should show you a phone number and an access code. Uh, and then another little code. So, so, Tina, let's see if that works. If not, there's there's other um, other volunteers, but we'll see if we can do this. So, here's a here's an old Google search results page for get out of debt. So we go through some of the idea, some of the matrix. Uh, so one of them is the offers. So I'm going to look through this, the the ads and look for offers. So you can see there, there's two. Um, are highlighted in yellow. One there has free consultation, the other has free counseling. Uh, if you take a look at the other ones, I don't really see offers. So like uh, the, the ChristianDebtCounselors.net, bottom right, just one up from the bottom, it says, you know, a rating with Better Business Bureau, 20 came in, debt required, call now, set payments, reduce debt. Well, it's got, it's got lots of stuff, but it's not exactly an offer. By offer, I mean, I can close my eyes and see what I'm going to get. Here's a thing. You're, you know, the offer is here's a rug, here's um, ear cancel noise canceling headphones, here's a consultation, a noun. The offer is is generally a noun. So you can go through there and you can see well, there's very few offers. So an offer might be a good thing here. Now let's take a look at features. So if the, this is one you'll typically find the most. Everyone packs their ads full of full of features. So here's here's the ones that I saw. Uh, bonded, 25-year law firm, easy, secure, less than four minutes, save thousands, nonprofit, free counseling, help thousands, 99 a month, 40 to 60 percent reduction, BB, BBB rating, 50 uh, percent debt free, 24 to 48 months, save as much as 70 percent, fast approval. All those are facts or claims about the offer either stated or, or implicit. So you'll see when you do this for your market, you'll, you'll get chock full of features. And call to action. Very few have call to a calls to action in general. Sometimes it's a, it's a useful thing, sometimes it's not. I would say if there's a lot of them, don't do it. If there's none, then doing it might be a good thing. So you can see call now, they're verbs. Call, call or start, start now, call now. So that's how you do the matrix. You go through it for each one of the ads that you're interested in, and you go through each of those columns, and you simply just write down what's there. You can see this, this isn't complex. It's not, it doesn't require a lot of discernment. It's just looking and writing things down. I like to do it with a pen, uh, you know, print it out and write it down with a pencil or pen. It feels more visceral, and I really get a sense of what the market looks like. Okay, another one is reason to believe. So I talked about those, those credibility factors. So you can see 25 year, bonded, we had the word United States, nonprofit, 50 plus years, the word trusted, Christian, um, Obama at the bottom there. Uh, this was in 2008 when uh, he, was, he was more popular than he is now. Um, so someone has a question, do you, in creating the matrix, do you stick to page one? Yes, I stick to page one. I don't think anybody's searching on page two. It's, not, it's really not worth my time. In fact, I generally stick to three or four or five ads. Most of, most of the ads you see are really not uh, competitive. So if I know here are the competitors that are always there or here's the ones that I know do a good job, I'm just using this as a way to see where the opportunities are. It's, there's, there's a definite law of diminishing return about doing too much of this. I tend not to do more than five these days. I, I originally created it to get to eight or 10, but five is fine, and that really gives me a sense of what's going on. There's just not that much uh, variety 
in in the, in the typical search results page. If I see one where there is, and I say, "Wow, this is this is all uh, this is really amazing," I might go deeper. But in general, I try to do this in about five minutes to get the whole matrix filled out, and then I'll see literally, I'll visually see that there's holes that nobody has a benefit, or oh, there's only one call to action, and I'll also see like the basic premise of the page. So let's see. Um, Tina, I'm going to uh, try to unmute you now, and let's see if this works. Uh... Hello, Tina? Hi. Is it working? I can hear you. Sounds great. Oh, great. Okay. Cool. So where are you calling from? Um, Missouri. Calling Missouri. from just north of Kansas City. Very nice. Very nice. Got a, I got a lot of friends who are homesteading out there. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, apparently your uh, your zoning requirements are uh, are very lenient. They get to do what they want. Uh, they are, but I'm actually a military, so we're only here temporary. <laughs> okay. So well, good, good thing you don't have to enforce them then. Yes. Okay. So tell me a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your business. Uh, what you're trying to accomplish. Well, I am a holistic nutritionist, and I work for Queen's Price Chopper. Um, we actually have a, an office in one of the five stores that Queen's owns. Uh, the problem being that getting the word out to the people and finding a way to encourage them to uh, buy into the services because you're looking at, you know, you're looking at some of the stores have lower demographics, um, but most of the, you know, most of the people that I'm looking for are, you know, your 40 to 60 year old woman married with children. She's juggling a lot of roles. She's, you know, she's looking to make a change, um, but you know, she's not sure how she wants to commit to that change. Oh, this is going to be fun. Cool. Oh, so, so when, you, when you say you're a holistic nutritionist, yes. So tell me a little bit about what that means. Well, I um, I went to school and I have a, a master's degree in actual holistic nutrition. So what I look for is I look for whole, holistic, whole person attitude towards making changes. So I don't approach people in terms of giving them a diet. I approach them in terms of how they how they actually approach food and we talk about ways to include foods that are going to be uh, healthy for them as opposed to taking diet pills or you know uh, cholesterol whatever well, you know whatever is the medication or the drug or whatever they think that they're going to take that's going to give them a quick fix so okay. I know possible herbal routes there's supplements there's but it's all as natural as possible. Okay, and so when you say holistic, one of the ways you mean that is that it, it fits in with their entire life and worldview. It's not some some external thing that you're trying to bolt on to an otherwise unbalanced, unhealthy life. Correct. And I assume you also mean holistic in terms of whole foods and, and trying to go to high quality foods as opposed to uh, like you know junk food and processed foods. Correct. Okay, so before we before we uh, take you into Avatar Land, so you, let's talk a little bit more about your ideal prospect. And by the way, anyone who has questions, please feel free to type them into the question box. I'm monitoring that, and the you know the more questions we all ask, the smarter we'll all become, and the more help Tina will get. Um, sometimes sometimes I, I take a swing and hit a home run, but very often I just you know this afternoon I was like stuck on something for about three minutes till somebody helped me out. So it re the, you know, the magic of this model really is the, the mastermind and not my mind. So say a, a woman between 40 and 60, married with a couple of children, and why does she need you? Well, she has, you know, she's not happy where she is. She's looking at her the way she looks. She feels old. She feels spent. She feels tired and fat. She doesn't take time for herself, and she's looking at her life and going, you know, where is the If you asked her 
what should you eat, she'd be able to answer that with some degree of confidence. Like, I, yeah, I should be eating more of this and less soda and stuff like that? Correct. Okay. Okay. So any, uh, any questions about the demographic before we, keep, before we dive in? All right, I don't see any. So, um, so Tina, you've been you've been on some other uh, calls, right? Yeah, I was actually there this afternoon. Okay, so a a glutton for checkmate. So what <laughs> we're gonna what we're gonna do is uh, I've I've talked about the uh, the metaphor of avatar is you uh, you take yourself and you turn yourself into your avatar. So. Um, this should be easy for you doing uh, holistic nutrition. Um, it, sh it shouldn't be anything too too uh, too weird and wild for you. So let's let's have you start uh, by giving your avatar a name. Uh, Stephanie. Stephanie. Okay. So Stephanie, and uh, what year was Stephanie born? Ooh, she's 47, so... 1965. Yeah. She's my age. Okay. So she had really bad hair in high school. <laughs> okay. And um, what's her husband's name? Max. Max? Mm-hmm. Okay. What does he do for a living? He is a, he's an executive, and I'm not quite sure what, what business he's in. Okay, so he's, they live in what, like a suburb of Kansas City? Correct. Okay, like, uh, was it Overton or? Overland Park. Overland Park, that's the one. What, that was, that's where the Sprint headquarters is, right? Correct, yes. Yeah, I was there for business several years ago. I tried to go jogging. It was the most depressing <laughs> run I've ever done. It's gotten better. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, and what is, does Stephanie work outside the home? No, she does not. Okay. Did she work before she had kids? Yes, and I believe she was a teacher. She's a teacher. Okay. Yes. What subject? Uh, elementary. Okay. Stephanie, an elementary school teacher. Uh, how long ago did she get married? Uh, she's been married 14 years. 14 years. So she got married when she was uh, 34, 33, I guess. 47. Oh, okay. so it was 23. So she was 20. Say that again? So it was 23. Now, what did I say, 12? She so was 23 married, when she got married. married. For, 20, for 23 years? Yeah. Okay, so she, so she was... Uh, 24 when she got married. Yes, 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 yes. Not 30. Okay, she was 24. So she had been, and she worked uh, as a as a teacher for another couple of years. Then she had her first child. Correct. How many How many kids does she have? Three. Three kids. Mm -hmm. how, how old is the oldest? Um, he is. Let's see, he's 16. Six. Yeah, he's 16, and then there's a girl in the middle, and she's 12, and then there's another boy at the bottom, and he's 9. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, so what, what I want you to do now is become Stephanie. So Stephanie is not necessarily searching, she's certainly not searching for holistic nutritionist, right? right. But, but somehow she, she's, she's searching for something. So is, is there like a keyword that you think she might actually type into Google? You know, might, might it be just like lose weight? Yeah, weight loss is a big one. So she would just type in weight loss and she's going to get inundated with pills and uh, X90 workouts and and uh, program with Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig and all that sorts of thing. And then somewhere in there, she, but, she, but she's really looking for something that's more holistic, something that addresses the whole life and not just, not just the pills or the diet. Right. Or maybe, she, you know, maybe she, she doesn't know that, but she would after she talked to you. So as a caveat as well, I, I am also a certified lifestyle educator. So... Okay that lends itself to creating 
change on a more total person holistic stand from a standpoint as well. If that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So you have the skill set, but she has no idea that she needs you. Right. That all when she starts her search, that all seems very extraneous. So you okay. can't so you can't connect with her in terms of here's what I've got that's going to help you. You have to connect with her in terms of the emotional content of her life. Right. So, so let's uh, have you sort of breathe and center yourself. Um, and what you know, one reason to do this just just to sort of, sort of tune in and whatever center means to you. But I, I suggest you do it on a very physical level, and just become aware of your own body and how it's holding itself, how it's sitting or standing or lying down, your general sort of tonus, are you sort of rigid or slumped or relaxed, um, what your breathing is like right now, you know, deep or shallow, fast or slow, uh, throat or belly. And that, that becomes, that's important because that becomes your baseline, that, you know, that's you. And so we have to, in order to, to, to figure out what's Stephanie, we have to separate your noise from her signal. So now you're going to get into your avatar body. And that, in this case, your avatar body is not a, a tall blue thing from, from another planet. It's Stephanie. So I want you to feel what it's like to be Stephanie. OK. And, and while you're doing that, a, question, a wonderful question from Howard. If you don't know the characteristics of your ideal customer, how can you attribute those characteristics to the avatar? Um, the answer is we're playing a game. And the game involves opening up a, a, a non-logical channel. So this is so a lot of your answers have been just intuitive. And, and they were really, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't know that because you're making it up. But this is sort of the first thing that comes out. I could ask you. Questions like, do you have any pets? Or you know, I, I could I could assume that you do. I could say, what kind of dog does Stephanie have? Right, and I would say that she she has a GSP because her hunt, her her husband likes to hunt, so she has okay. a German short hair pointer. German short hair pointer. Okay, cool. So so you know so even even that, um, Howard is um, it's coming from somewhere from some intuition. Now, there's, of course, there's always the danger that we're wrong, but that's why we're doing this in an AdWords context where, where we expect to be wrong a lot of the time. But we're just, this is, if you're a baseball fan, we're swinging for the fences. We're not, we're not trying to hit dinky little singles or bunt. We're, we're going for it because nobody else is going for it. Okay, so as, as, uh, as Stephanie, uh, you know, tell me how you feel. Just sit, Scattered. Sit there. Say more. Scattered, wired, tired, always on the go. Never, there's never a time to sit down and just relax. There's always too much to do. The kids are have always got activities. If I'm not preparing stuff for them, then um, you know it's one of my husband's activities going on that I'm trying to work around to make sure everybody's taken care of. Hmm. So there's 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 no Stephanie there. Not a lot, no. There's a uh, there's a Stephanie-shaped bundle of activity. And it has. I feel like I've been going for a long time without without almost on autopilot at this point that it's just I don't even think about when I get up in the morning my mind's racing about all the stuff that needs to be done and it doesn't stop until I drop at night and then and even then my sleep is not so great right so um, so what we're gonna do here it's 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 different than than just the diary entry. Um, this is what I call the arc of longing. So we have a, we have a sense of the keyword is weight loss, and we have a sense now of what's right. The the weight loss is just the way in. So this is this is sort of a perfect example of what I was talking about earlier. If Stephanie managed to 
lose how much pound, how many pounds does she want to lose? About thirty. About thirty. Um, so if Stephanie lost thirty pounds and nothing else changed, that wouldn't be a win. For it would be a short-term win, but it wouldn't it wouldn't address the, what's really going on. No, because I've dieted many times and I've lost weight and it's come back and I've dieted again and it's well, I've lost and come back. So it's it's never been something that's lasted more than a year. Got it. Uh, so I want to before we before we go into the arc, I want to invite people who are who are listening. If you have any questions for Stephanie, if that. If you had to write an ad that lets Stephanie know, or you know, an ad, a landing page, a website that lets Stephanie know that there's help, what do you want to? What else do you want to know about Stephanie before you write that ad? Uh, I'm going I'm to encourage people to type something because uh, the, the, the benefit of this, I think, comes from engaging with it. A lot of, a lot of shy folks. All right. So uh, Michael wants to know, Stephanie, what's what's your biggest concern? And and I'll, I'll rephrase that as, what's what's the thing that's getting you down the most? The thing that's getting me down the most? Yeah, what's the thing you're most upset about, most down on yourself or, or down on the world? What's, what, what, you know, what, what's at the surface? Well, I don't feel like, I, I don't like the way I look when I look in the mirror. That's, that would be something that's on the surface. And I okay. feel tired. Beautiful. I look, I look in the mirror and I don't see... I don't I don't like what I see. So that's, you know, when you when you talk about all the all the the things that are going on, but that's the visceral one. I'm just I'm just unhappy with who I've become. Um, how did it It's kind of like how did it how did I get here? How did, how did I let this happen? Yeah. So it reminds me of, you know, one of the most poignant song lyrics. I know is from Running on Empty by Jackson Brown. He says, when did that road turn into the road I'm on? Mm. So uh, Jim wants to know, is, do you have a feeling of hopelessness that things won't change? Because you mentioned you've dieted and lost weight and, and yo-yoed several times. Do you feel like you're just stuck here? I do. I definitely feel stuck. Okay. Uh, Michael wants to know what would a change do for you? What would you know if, if things if you could wave a magic wand? What would be different? Well, you know, I'd have more energy. I would look in the mirror and like what was what I saw. Um, you know, I'd want to go out and you know do things with my husband. Um, you know, and dress up and go out and do things in the city. Kansas City has so much to offer. And, you know, I'd like to be able to enjoy, I don't know, enjoy being out and being about and get into new activities maybe. Okay. Great. So... I just want, I want to explore a little bit about your relationship with your husband. Okay. Um, does he notice? Does he know how you feel? He's uh, yeah, he's supportive. He's always been supportive of you know me being wanting to make changes. He's always supportive about what I do. He's a great guy. Uh, is he able to be supportive in a way that <laughs> I say this delicately that doesn't make it sound like he wants you to look better? No, I think, you know, I think if I was able to communicate to him exactly what it was that I needed for support, that he would be able to do it. Um, I think sometimes I try to, I expect support without 
him understanding, and he doesn't really understand how to support me, so then I get frustrated, but mm -hmm. really it comes down to the fact that I don't communicate it very well, because mm -hmm. maybe I'm okay. not sure what I need for support, and maybe that's what it is. Right, so that's all, that's all part of a, uh, the, the, the pattern of, of something, something vital is missing. Right. Inclu including the engine that could get you moving. Correct. Okay. Yes. So tell me, tell me about um, the, the child with whom you have the most tempestuous relationship. Oh, that would probably be the 16-year-old. Your 16-year-old son. Yes. Well, what's going on with with you and him? Well, he's 16 and thinks he can do everything and doesn't need to have a parent around and doesn't need to have boundaries and so it's very difficult <laughs> to run a household when you've got somebody who wants to just all of a sudden do their own thing. Uh-huh. Okay. And what was it like before that? What was your relationship with him? What's his name? Um, Jesse. Jesse. Okay, so before Jeffy turned into this, uh, you know, independence-seeking missile, what was your relationship like with him? Um, he was, you know, he was a very um, introverted middle schooler. So when he was in upper elementary school and into middle school, he was very introverted. He was very, he had very low self-esteem and. He didn't have a lot of friends, and so when we when he got into high school, um, he got in with a different group, and all of a sudden he just exploded. Hmm. And what makes that hard for you? Well, probably that he is doesn't need me as much, I guess. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe he's able to make his own decisions, you know, he's he's wild, but for the most part, the you know, he doesn't make terrible decisions. I don't always agree with them, but he doesn't he doesn't make bad decisions very often. Right. So let's let's hold on because there's some interesting echoes of what he wants for himself and what you want for yourself. But let's 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 sort of hold those in curiosity for a little bit. And now let's go into the arc. So, Stephanie, I want you to go back, and let's have everybody do this as Stephanie. Go back to the time in your childhood when you were at your most optimistic, your most idealistic, your most excited, your most hopeful. Um, and tell me sort of what, what age that was. When I, when I felt that? Yeah. When you were a kid. You know, probably right around in the third grade and when you start when I started seeing seeing the possibilities in the world. Really kind of really seeing them, really understanding, you know, what the world could what I could do in the world. Excellent. Okay, so you were in third grade, you were about what, eight or nine? Mm-hmm. Let's say eight, eight, year, eight years old, and what was what did you imagine? You know, as 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 you you got some oh, I thought when that you I were, would... when when you were a grown up. I thought that I would be traveling. I you know I found out about things like the Peace Corps. And, you know, the, the thought of, I always was a, a bit of a leader teacher in some form or another. So I always thought about, you know, I thought, how cool would it be to teach in another country, to live in another country? Hmm. So really, you're really somebody who's, who's vibrantly contributing to the world on, on her own terms. Yeah. Yeah. And what? What else did you imagine you'd have a family, uh, a husband, kids, 
or you know you'd be solo did, did that did that come into it at all I don't know I think that being you know I think being when I was in third grade thinking about all this stuff um, you know being a grown-up yeah um, you know family and kids came into the picture but it was like a distant like a distant thing you know mm -hmm. it wasn't really something that I was dying to do to get married and have a family it was that was kind of way way down the road right but that's you know it was somehow part of of this successful life you were gonna have right it was you know it was, it was just it was just later right but it was it wasn't like you had to choose you were gonna have right it all. right and where did you grow up I'm right here in the Midwest okay and what was what was your family like when you were growing up um, as I suppose as normal uh, as a family could be, my dad was, my dad is, still is a machinist. My mom um, was a teacher's aide or is a teacher's aide. And I have a younger brother and he's moved, you know, he's moved um, up to Montana with, and he lives with his wife. And so my parents are now, you know, they live in the, um, southern part of the state so they're about I don't know, an hour away mm -hmm. and do you have a, do, have you had a good relationship with your family with your parents um yeah I mean things uh, yes and no I mean things were things my, my parents have been married for 40 years but they don't necessarily like each other uh. so that's come out in one form or another over the years and it's made things difficult uh -huh. um, but I've finally been able to uh, discern the triggers that set me off and when I need to back away and things like that, which has made our relationship infinitely better. Great. So what did you, what did you learn from your parents, either things that they intended to teach you or they didn't intend to teach you about life? Um, that it's not easy, but that things are possible that you can achieve, that you can go where you want to go and do what you want to do. Great. So they were they were supportive of your dreams? They were. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. I was also, I was a, you know, I was a, a fairly independent teenager as well. So, you know, that might be <laughs> part of what makes Jesse so difficult is that I can see where he was. And mm hmm Right. Okay, so I just I want to I want to sort of uh, um, hold up uh, someone who has something to offer to help people enrich their lives, and it's already you know it's already tending towards sort of empowerment, health, um, it's, it's uh, you know, there's, there's traveling around the world. So this is, this is a beautiful picture of, of, of an exciting life, of, 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 a, of a girl who at that point thinks her family is perfectly normal, doesn't realize that her, her parents are going through the same crap that every family goes through at some level, and and she's got this she's got this vision and it's not real clear but it kind of involves you know husband and kids travel do her own thing save the world help people be really cool and i want everyone to just hold hold that bundle of energy that bundle of positive happy energy for just a few seconds so what I want you to do, Stephanie, and this this is not going to be easy. I want you to I want you to be eight year old Stephanie, feeling that that excitement about life. And now look at the next thirty nine years up to the present, and see where you are now at the age of forty seven and see all the ways in which you're surprised and disappointed at how things have turned out. See, 
say to 47-year-old Stephanie? What happened? <laughs> hmm. What happened? And 47-year-old Stephanie says, what do you mean? Well, I wanted to travel. I wanted to go. I wanted to be active. I wanted to have this exciting life and help people. And What are you doing? Yeah, wasn't wasn't Stephanie always a cute kid? Absolutely. Everyone, everyone, adorable, good looking. Mhm. Mm right. Popular yeah. and attractive in high school. Active, played sports. You know, had decent grades, but was just always on the go. It was you know fairly popular, easy to get along with. So, so can can everybody feel? The pathos here, the sadness, the regret of this life that somehow has been derailed. And the longing to get back on, on the on the right track. Right. So this is this is beyond this is so far beyond I want to lose thirty pounds. Or That's even this is this is beyond I want to get control of my life back. This is this is about you know, you said the word for Jesse you said the word boundaries. Uh, this is about you having lost all your boundaries. Every every per, semi permeable, impermeable membrane that that your healthy ego set up to to transport you through life has been punctured and compromised and nobody has done it except for you and people have been you know colluded and been happy as you've done it and have felt grateful that you've done it but you're the only one who could do it you're the only one who agreed and so now as as 47-year-old Stephanie, what I would love for everyone to do, uh, not just Tina, but everyone, is as 47-year-old Stephanie, write for two minutes a diary entry about what you've lost, what you're, what you're sad about, what you're regretting, what you're longing for, what you would like, what you wish your eight-year-old self could be experiencing now instead of instead of what's going on. So let's have everybody just uh, you know, pencil the paper and just start write down, dear diary, uh, let's let's start with um, I'm so sad that I'll uh, I'll shut up and uh, give you two minutes to write. And conclude the diary entry with what I really, really want now is.
Okay, and folks who are who are not Tina, if you could uh, type in what you got. Uh, and Tina, do you have something that you could share with us? Well, I, I just wrote that I feel so sad that I almost feel resentful, a little bit of resent right now, resentfulness towards my husband. I almost feel like that I've been steamrolled into this life and that maybe this is, you know, that I'm not unhappy that I have my three children and my family and my husband is great, but that I'm sad that I feel this way. Mm. And what do you want? I want to make the change that's going to help me get the to feeling like I feel to feeling like I want to feel. I don't necessarily have to travel the world, but I can't sit here and feel so and steamrolled is the word that I came up with. Mm. I feel I feel steamrolled. I feel flattened. Like life has just life has just run me over. And it's dragging me. It's I you know I am not even in the car. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm being dragged behind the car. Just dragged along for the ride. Right. So uh, John writes exactly those, those words. I want to get my life back. I want to recover my lost dreams. Michael, Michael writes, Dear Diary, I want my life back. Where did it go? I want to change. So the, the, the big metaphor here is, I think, um, absence and immobility. And yet, it's not just, you know, we said steamrolled, but also dragged. So there's, there's, there's a double whammy of I'm being, I'm moving, but I'm not under my own steam. Right. Um, that I'm, I have, I have no agency in my own life. I have no control. And it's very interesting that you talked about, you know, realizing this resentment, because as I, as I was feeling into it, and you know, I was a little surprised when Stephanie said, "No, my husband's a great guy. He'd give me whatever I want." There was, it was almost too quick. Like, like, you know, she had to mask the feelings. She has a, a, a real ferocious anger towards her husband. Yeah. Because because consciously she she feels he doesn't deserve any of that. Well, and I don't feel like he deserves that because it was never he never forced the marriage. You know, he never forced it. It was us coming together. He never forced having children. We discussed it, and you know, I didn't. Yeah, but but you know forward. what? It doesn't matter whether he deserves it or not. It's there. Those, those feelings are there. And until yeah. they are felt and accepted, they're gonna they're gonna do havoc. Yeah. Because she doesn't feel she doesn't even feel worthy to have those feelings. That that, some, right. that somehow that those are the wrong feelings to have, as if as if feelings could be right or wrong. Well, almost shame on me for thinking that. Yeah, and sh well, shame on me for thinking, but thank God I don't think that. Right. You know, because that would be that would be unacceptable. Because that would make me a bad person. Right. So we could, you know, we could go in in depth, and I want to get back to to Howard's question earlier about. So we were, you know, we're we're making this up. But there's a universal quality, whether or not her name is Stephanie, whether or not she has three kids and and lives in Overland Park. Right, there's a universal quality that I think a lot of people can identify with. I, I suspect that lots of women can identify with this um, because, you know, the, com the compulsion to be the caretaker, to hold everything together. Absolutely. Um, but men, too, to feel like, you know, somehow I'm no longer pulling life. Life is pulling me. And the way that comes up issues of of weight 
right? So I, I don't I don't know exactly the kind of training and uh, and philosophy you have, but you know, sort of there's there's metaphors of of excess weight as as being tra you know attempts to fill up, right? To fill yourself with with secondary foods, right? As, as opposed to the primary the primary nutrition of a life loved. Um, so and it, you know, I think a lot of it for the for the women that I deal with, especially the women, it's a lack of awareness. So not only that's part of them being pulled by their life, is that lack of awareness in even what they're eating. So they don't even realize that they're eating maybe when they're not hungry or that they're having an emotional craving as opposed to an actual physical hunger. Right, and because these are these are physical activities. So what we've been talking about here is very sort of amorphous. Like how do you get to issues of, you know, this is this, this very abstract issues. Eating is a very non-abstract thing. You pick it up with your hand or your fork or you don't. You put it in your mouth or you don't. You chew it or you swallow it. So these, these are, again, these are like little tentacles of the mundane that reach down into the very depths of our being. So um, I'm curious. What if I'd like folks to uh, and you and you Tina to to write some ads, write some ad copy, a phrase, a couple of words. You know, uh, in fact, if, let's let's uh, let's take a look at Google and see. We didn't do any matrix work about this at all, but if we just type in weight loss. So let's just take take a look at the, the first several ads. Um, like that. So you've got uh, Jenny Craig, learn more official site, learn more about getting started, select uh, schedule a free consultation, try sensa.com, average weight loss of 30 plus pounds in six months, try it free for 30 days, is surgery right for you? Uh, three sneaky hormones that are making you fat and how to stop them. The natural weight loss pill is proven to easily reduce body fat. No surgery weight loss. Is any of this speaking to Stephanie? No. Not even, not even remotely. Right? I mean, there's one that's trying to speak to her. It says weight loss of 30 plus pounds in six months. Isn't that exactly the number that you, that you mentioned? Yeah, it is. And yet, why is that? Why does that miss? Which one are you talking about? Where are you? Sorry, Sensa Weight Loss System, the second one. Oh, okay, okay. Because it means taking a pill. Because I—that's what I think it means. I think it means taking a pill. Right, and and it also means you know she—you told me she's also done this several times. Right. Yeah, I've I've lost. Yeah, I believe I can lose weight, but this is—it's just going to come back. Because there's some there's something bigger wrong. So what, let's let's have let's have folks take a look at this page and see if you can come up with some phrases that you would put in an ad that would speak to Stephanie and to the to the to the niche she represents to the demographic to the to the psychographic of of women who feel out of control and their lives have been derailed and they want them back and the weight loss is just one part of it it's the it's the part excuse me it's the part they know they they can articulate consciously so we've got reclaim your life free both body and mind naturally so there's the word naturally appears in the the top right ad lose belly fat naturally but here here it has a different meaning, Michael, Michael suggested. Pills robbing the very soul of your existence. Regain once again your childlike zest for life with a holistic approach. So some wonderful, wonderful lines in there. Childlike zest. Remember when you could do anything? So I would, uh, you know, I would, I would try to speak to the longing. So instead, rather than, and these are, these are wonderful. Some of them sort of go into the the positive too quickly. Like if you tell, if you just say to Stephanie, "Hey, reclaim your life," like back off, <laughs> right? The, you know, are uh, remember, remember when anything was possible. 
So uh, Tina's got a relaxing way to lose weight and take control of your life. So con con the idea of control. John has get gain control of your life, realize your dream. Um, Uh, so think, you know, thinking about, you know, take time to take care of you. You know, you've gained weight. What have you lost? Most most weight law, most weight gain happens when you lose yourself, taking care of others. And you don't even have to offer anything. Wouldn't, wouldn't that sentence have Stephanie saying, wow, somebody understands me? All right, so let's see, what, what else can we come up with that empathizes? Before we try to solve, before we promise, what are some phrases we could use that really empathize where Stephanie would say, wow, that's true, that's me? And it, doesn't, you know, it could be things that she already knows. My life is out of control. I feel like I'm being steamrolled. I'd love to see an ad with the word steamroll in it, or I'm, uh, you know, I'm, being, I'm not even driving, not even driving the car, being dragged behind it, uh, you know. But you can also speak to things that she's not yet aware of. So um, Eric, or Kate, says to catch the searcher in the beginning, um, whether are you catching the searcher at the beginning or have they thought about the, the angle of emotional eating? So this is a reminiscent of my friend Glenn Livingston who, who actually sells in weight loss, the weight loss market, around the angle of emotional eating. So obviously all the people who are going to go for a pill or surgery or a Jenny Craig program are not really your, your prospects, but someone who is um, who is already interested in the issue of emotions and, and the, the whole person. Um, so good, good point about, you know, if we're speaking specifically about, which, about keywords, um, making sure that we tune our response to, to where, where, their, um, where their consciousness is, where their awareness is. Ah, here's a beautiful, a beautiful phrase, regain your lightness. Control your life, control your weight, regain your lightness. When did things get so heavy? Not just you, everything. Right. So some, some, somehow telling, putting out there that the weight loss is a symptom. And she, it, it's, it's, a, it's an assumptive statement that she already, you already know this, Stephanie. You already know it, you just need to hear it from somebody else. Uh, life doesn't happen all at once. Learn how to take back your life one small step at a time. Mm, beautiful. Because there's that feeling of regret, like I'm, I'm totally off track, and what I want to do is, you know, click my heels three times and go back to Oz. And you're, and you're, and you're saying that's, you don't need that. That small, small empowering steps. Uh, I'd like to see the word power in an ad. You know, take, you can reclaim your power with your knife and fork. Anything else folks have, they can, uh, they can toss, toss in the ring here. So I can see, I, you know, gain power over your choices, says Nick. So yeah, so so that the the idea that you know, Nick, that's 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 actually, depending on the way you say it, it can be threatening to tell Stephanie, you know, you made choices. You look in the mirror. You're the one who brought yourself here. Don't blame your husband. Don't blame your kids. Don't blame Congress. This was you. And, and and of course that's true, and at the same time it, it can it can that can feel very threatening, and at the same time those choices kind of just happened. They were so small, like little sliding doors, that they may not have been. You, she may not have been awake 
for them. They might have happened, you know, life is what happens while we're busy making other plans. Uh, is she a Beatles fan, Miss Stephanie? <laughs> would she yes. recognize? Would she would she recognize that quote from John? Yes, Lennon? absolutely. So I, you know, throw that in there. We didn't we didn't talk about like who she likes, who her other influences are. This is a totally different exercise. But uh, you know, what happened while you what happened while you were making other plans? Um, become 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 a beautiful girl again, or meet meet your you know meet your beautiful inner girl or something you know to uh, to riff on the the beautiful boy song from which that line mm -hmm. that line comes. Um, I have some more. Uh, Choice plus, plus behavior equals change. Get the support you want. So the word support is big. Nick threw that in there. Support. Who supports Stephanie right now? In her eyes, nobody. Yeah, nobody. So if you're offering support, you you support everyone. Who supports you? Hmm. Right. Who who cares for the caregiver? You need support too. So a lot a lot of different things to riff on here. Um, I want to you know thank you everyone for th for throwing out those uh, those wonderful suggestions. Um, so Tina, I'd like to get a little bit of feedback from you um, on you know what has been valuable for you. Um, I, you know, the, all of the different ideas about the different, uh, uh, you know, the, the lines that we just did, um, those are really helpful because the verbiage is something that I've struggled with on how to get across. And I've spent a lot of time putting up signs in the stores, but it's been strictly informational, and I haven't taken the emotional approach. And I think that identifying the need to take that emotional approach is probably pretty critical. Yeah, I, th I could I could see you. I was I was picturing you putting up flyers for an informational evening in which you explain the dynamics of of weight gain, health loss, and and life constriction in ways that the, that these women walk in feeling down, they trudge in, or they've got this fake cheerfulness. You know, hey, how's it going? And they come they come face to face with the pain and the hope. And they leave they leave with a with a new understanding and they leave empowered. Right. And the flyer that gets them there uses a lot of this language to really and it, it needs to. I think so. Yeah, it does. It does because I sit down, when I sit down with my clients and I talk to them, it's a lot of emotional talk. Um, but getting them in the door has been a struggle. Once I get them in the door, then I have a lot of success with helping, you know, helping people make changes. But getting them in the door has been a challenge. All right. Here's. I just want to, because uh, we're recording this, and you'll you'll find it useful later. Here's some other lines that have come in. Life happens. Become that person you remember. Uh, Dave has a phrase. That's from Michael. Dave has a phrase. Remember when you could. Dot dot dot. Uh, break free. Break break free of the straitjacket that life has placed on your body and soul. So you know, if that were an ad, I would say. Are you living in a straitjacket? And then you can talk about. Well, I, I would say, do you feel like you're living in a straitjacket? You, f yeah. Can you f can you yeah. feel the straitjacket around your life? And maybe no, maybe you can. You don't talk about it because you feel nobody would understand. After all, you've got a great marriage, beautiful kids, uh, nice house. Everything looks perfect from the outside, and yet you're gasping for breath, and you're gaining weight, 
and you're feeling bad and your doctor's told you to go on Lipitor and you're, you're wondering what happened to my life. Well, I've got to tell you, you're not alone. That's, that's, I find, I find, you know, more than half of the people I work in my practice come in with that sort of feeling. And for many of them, I'm the first person they've ever, they've ever confided in that that's what's going on. Mm. So I, I see that as, as a flyer or, you know, or any, any variation of these. I don't know what's going to work. Right, and because we don't know, we really don't know who uh, uh, who 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 Stephanie is. If this is right, if everything's right, you have, you have a good sense of a lot of it, but you're gonna you know sort of play in the marketplace and apply more more thought and more intuition, and you're gonna get closer and closer to a message that really that really starts with uh, witnessing. It's a you know it's witnessing someone else. And what they're going through is, and, and empathizing with them is a really sacred act. And when you do that, you've gone far beyond marketing. And yet it's much more powerful than anything else I know how to do. If you think about the people who have really helped you, you know, people that you've paid for help, um, and it's been a profound, transformative, empowering experience, at some point you got witnessed by them. And you felt heard, and because you know people don't know how to do that, we don't get that in our lives. We don't feel we don't feel heard and witnessed. Mm. So I think we already we already talked about the issue of I just made this up. It's not real. Um, yes, and there's probably a lot of truth. So um, you know, Tina, I think you 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 feel that there's that what we've come up with, our, our, our imaginary rifts, have a lot of truth in them. Absolutely. Okay. And if you don't go for it, then you sentence yourself to look like the rest of that search results page. Lose 30 plus pounds in six months. Three, three, you know, money back guarantee. That's mediocrity. That's not speaking to anybody's deeper self. And three, if you're doing AdWords, you get to test it. Or if you're talking to, you know, you can, if you're not using AdWords, you put up flyers and you see which flyer gets people to show up. Or you talk to people that you meet and you tell them what you, they, what, what you do by describing not your process, not I'm a holistic nutritionist and I'm a, uh, a, a life, what would you call yourself, a, uh, a life empowerment? A lifestyle educator. Lifestyle educator. Um, Yes. But you talk in terms of, well, what I do is, you know how um, when people, when women, you know, blah, 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 and you're describing them to themselves. And you get to test that. And right. see, you'll see immediately that someone lights up. You know, I can see it when I hit the mark with someone with a prospect for a coaching or, or a, you know, Camp Checkmate course. And I say, it's for people who are struggling with this. And sometimes they go, oh, okay. And I know, well, that, that didn't nail it. But sometimes they say, wow, that's really me. That's, that's exactly what, I, what I'm going through. And when they feel that connection, they want, they want more because there's, there's an implicit understanding that if, if, if I can name it that well, if I can diagnose it, I can cure it. Uh, so... Um, Tina, I want to thank you so much for for jumping in and volunteering and uh, and stepping in for uh, for this roller coaster. Um, and I, uh, I know it's hard for Stephanie. I don't. I, I never can tell if it's hard for the the actual person, whether uh, whether anything was hard for you or whether you were able to to uh, separate oh, yeah, yourself. No. It, it, you know, it is. It's a you know, it's a combination. But thinking to the people that I work with and the demo, you know, the, the women that I, especially the women that I work with and that I see out there, you know, in the store and in the community. Um, I think that, you know, I, I think that this helped me to kind of wrap myself around the whole picture. 
as opposed to just bits and pieces that, you know, I, I had a lot of it, but I didn't have it all. Well, great. And, uh, you know, it's uh, being, being all holistic, <laughs> there's, always, there's always another level. There is, absolutely. Right? There's, there's, always, there's always, you know, every time you look back and say, boy, I thought I was holistic then. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> wow. So, uh, so this is, uh, you know, n never ending, and I appreciate your, uh, your willingness to, to, add, to add another uh, layer of the onion here. And, you know, I don't, I don't really feel like going into a, <laughs> a hard close for Virtual Camp Checkmate. I just want to describe it. And in terms of what we've been doing here. So it's, it's a six-week course, sorry, a seven-week course, starting on November 6th. It's on Tuesdays from, uh, start, uh, there's one at 1 p.m. Eastern Time and one at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So one of them will be at the time that this call happened. It'll be roughly this long. It'll be 75 to 90 minutes. And when I say it's going to transform your business, I mean it in, in, in this sense, that we're going to be doing this kind of work um, and you're you're going to, and, and, I, and I say this because this is what's happened to people who've taken the the live in-person courses, and it's happened to a lot of people just on these free webinars that you you totally reorient yourself. And your, your marketing becomes a vehicle to help you serve better, and to express your deep compassion for your market, and. You know, this, this was a really good example of where deep compassion is needed, but you can also have deep compassion if you're selling other things that may not seem so emotionally fraught. Like this afternoon, earlier today, the webinar was with a, a guy who, who sells leak detection for slabs. He can fix your leaking slabs. And there was a lot of emotion that went into someone, um, you know, feel like they're out of control and they're they're facing, uh, you know, a house catastrophe. So there's very little that, that doesn't have this emotional impact in it. And and going just going through all these exercises, you know, yes, there's, you know, you're going to learn how to write ads, you're going to learn how to do landing page headlines, landing page body, uh, how to do testing, how to do all the all the details of of a marketing campaign. Um, but what you're really going to get is a set of tools for for deep empathy that all of a sudden will make you it will make it easy to market because it's like you know it's it's like writing a love letter to one person as opposed to a demographic you know try imagine trying to do this exercise for a woman between 40 and 60 who's married and is overweight right there's no way we could have approached the depth um, and and for those of you who already have businesses where you you know your customers, this just it just bubbles up. As long as you know you, you get into the right frame of mind and give yourself permission, the answers will come to you, and and they will be right a lot more than not. Um, and for folks who are consultants, you know, like me, who do this for other people, this is a really powerful tool, especially one on one. You know, so, so Tina, if you and I were just sort of working on this. You know, it certainly helps to have everybody else chiming in with great stuff. But, you know, I get, I, get, I get a lot of great feedback from my clients for just asking these questions, for just, for just leading them to what they know, as opposed to me having to be smart. <laughs> right? There's very, there's very little that I added to this conversation. It was mostly drawing things out of you that you already knew. And, and just holding them up to the light. So, you know, if, if you're a marketing consultant, and this is a very easy way of getting really good, deep material out of, out of your clients. Um, so, um, it's the, the way the course is structured is you learn on your own. I have, you know, videos and articles to read. Uh, you, don't have to sit in the webinar and, and have me go at a pace that's too fast or too slow or repeat things that you've heard already or skip over things that you wish I'd said. You get to kind of do it at your own time. Um, you're going to get homework, so you come to class with something that you've worked on. 
And the classes are called tumblers, like a rock tumbler where, where all the, the, the stones go in and bounce around and, uh, and polish each other. And that's how we're going to work together in small groups and as a large group to, uh, to really hone everyone's uh, business and message till it really you know, shines with an inner luster. So the syllabus um, is the, we're going to work on the matrix, which we, really, we didn't really talk about much today. The avatar in detail, and then everything else, three through seven, are all based on those two. So landing page headlines, what triggered the search, which we didn't talk about with, with Stephanie, is why did she search just now? Did something happen? Did she try to put on a pair of jeans that were already her fat jeans and she didn't fit into them? Did she, did she look at herself in a shop window and think it was someone else? So the search triggers can also tell us a lot, and we're going to show how to, how to connect landing pages, landing page headlines to those triggers. Um, what are the fears, doubts, and objections that would stop someone from moving forward? So one example is that, that ad that we saw for Tricensa was, uh, you know, lose 30 plus pounds in six months. That's exactly what you want. But the unspoken objection is, I've already done this. It's just not, it's not going to stick. And that ad, and I'm sure that landing page doesn't doesn't really address that fear. Um, and then how to, how to address the objections once we've recognized them and a way to use testimonials to, to get your happy customers and clients to craft testimonials, to help them craft testimonials that specifically answer the objections. And that's important because especially in search marketing, we don't need to build desire. Desire is built in. We just need to remove the obstacles. And this is another, it's a, it's a really sacred thing to do for someone who has been saying no to life, no to themselves, no to, to, to the type of development. Like Stephanie reads self-help books, self-development books, and yet doesn't do those objections and get her to say yes to something, to say yes to anything that moves her in a positive direction, that can cascade. Um, then a testing plan for all the different ads and all the different headlines that we're going to create. How do we test them most efficiently so we're not just foundering? A lot of people create so much material through this process, through all the different exercises, that they end up saying, well, I don't know, there's just too much. So we're, we're going to, we've got to get that under control. And then um, a quick, quick and dirty checkmate method, 80-20. So 20% of the time gives you 80% of the results. When I don't even have time, to spend an hour looking at it where I can just go and, uh, you know, 20 minutes can give me a real good read on a market and some things to try. Uh, so I've just gone over all those. Um, I can't tell if this is right for you or for anyone. Um, you, know, you know, it's not, it's not an obvious clear thing I'm selling. So I have to, I have to uh, sell a little hard to, to get people to try it. And so the only way that I feel good about doing that is by an unconditional money-back guarantee. If this is a mistake for any reason, you're not obligated to, to suck it up. I, I have to. If I've, if I've sold this um, and it's not right for you and I've you know, accidentally misled you, then absolutely you know, your money back. Um, And so what, what, you know, in order to, to get the most out of this, you need to show up for the tumblers, to participate, to share, you know, ideas. And it won't just be typing in. It'll be actual uh, breakout session conversations. And you've got to be willing to take in new ideas from others and share your ideas with, uh, with other people. So I'm going to skip over the testimonials. Um, and the cost here is... Um, Early bird special still going on. Um, three payments of $197, so three monthly payments, um, which feels it feels fair to me. It feels like a good um, you know, a good balance of the value that you're going to get, the effort um, I'm putting in, um, and and what you know what what it's going to be worth to you. Uh, that said, I. I'd like to be inclusive. If you would like to participate and this is too much for you, um, I'm open to a sliding scale. 
So if you want to send me an email at howie at askhowie.com and say, yeah, I'd like to take this, and let me know what you what what feels right that you can afford. And if it, it feels right to me too, um, I like Um, I I don't want money to be the main factor. You know, the the money to me is very important symbolically, and obviously I need to make money in order to you know keep my house and buy my fruit trees and send my kids to a good school and guitar lesson and all that. So you know, I'm not saying like you know I don't care. I don't need the money. Of course I need the money. Um, but that that said, I don't want it to to get in the way. Um, there's no funny bonuses, crazy stuff. I just want you to stay focused on the, the course itself. And so, you know, the things I said, if you're available on these Tuesdays and you feel like, you know, getting getting some more clients uh, could pay, you know, a couple more clients this year could pay for the course, then uh, I, I think it makes sense. And two extra modules. Uh, one is crafting your unique selling proposition. And Tina, this is be I think very useful for you. I think I, I get a sense that you can talk very convincingly and naturally and easily about what you do, but you're I don't I don't sense that there's like one sentence that really nails it where people hear that one sentence and they go, "Oh, yes, that's me." And very often we teach people to do a unique selling proposition in a way that feels forced and artificial. And if I tried to get you to come up with one now, that's what would happen. We would we would cobble something together. It would sound good. It would sound like some other people's unique selling propositions. It might have a guarantee, but it wouldn't be organic to you and to your business. But after seven weeks of this, the organic USP bubbles up, and we, we're going to capture it in the bonus uh, webinar. And then the last thing is visionary business improvement. You may discover after working with your avatar that she needs something else, not something you're not providing right now, or something that you provide in a different way. And so we're going to we're going to look at and help you, um, you know, grow the business, not just the marketing, but the actual delivery, based on what we've discovered in in working with the avatar. And those I think those are those make sense to me as as bonuses that are going to be after the main course, so sometime in uh, early 2013. Uh, when you've had a chance to chew on it. And if you sign up um, today from, from this call, you're also, I'm also going to provide three months of support after the class ends through a, a secret Facebook group. We can uh, you know, post our, our keywords, our avatars, our challenges, and, and really support each other. And I'll do a monthly coaching call that will not be me teaching anything, but just me showing up open to help you with whatever issues you're having. If you've uh, you know, if you're trying something that hasn't been working, we can talk about that. If you're a consultant and you've got a new client and you can't quite figure out how to make this work, we can talk about that. And, you know, I, my goal is to do, do things that I love that help other people and get paid well for it. And so that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do here. I've never done this before. I've always, my Checkmate courses have always been live two-day events. So... I feel like you know a couple of breakthroughs I've I've made in in pedagogy and teaching online make me feel very confident that I can um, I can create not the same experience but an experience of, of of equal if not slightly greater value because it's going to take seven or nine weeks as opposed to two days. Um, so if you're interested. Uh, I'd love to have you on the course. You go to campcheckmate.com. That should redirect you right to the uh, virtual Camp Checkmate uh, sales letter. If there are any questions about the course, I would love to answer them now. Otherwise, um, I have we've gone over. I got really into into Stephanie and her life, so I uh, I apologize for the uh, the extra long time. Um, and if there are any questions, I'll take them, take them now. Just type them in. Um, and if you don't have any questions, you can, you can get off the phone and go sign up right now or uh, sign up for another webinar or just stay in touch. And I, I trust that at the time when this will be useful for you, uh, we, will, we will connect then. So, Tina, I'm going to thank you for, for playing, for, for being brave, brave enough to raise your hand. 
Um, Thank you very much. Sure thing. Um, oh, I have a John would like to speak. John attended the uh, the the live webinar in Chicago. John, hello. John, can we hear you? Um, can you? Yes. How you doing? I, I'm doing great. How are you? Um, I, I just wanted to say a couple of things. One, I did attend, and I think it was the first um, uh, Camp Checkmate you put on. Um, and one of the things I wanted to share with everybody is I listen to Howie every chance I get because he is absolutely one of the best teachers around. And I don't think you'll find anybody that's more dedicated to teaching than to making money. Um, and I honestly think that what you've given in the webinar, uh, I'm getting more out of the webinars than I than I did the all, the live events because uh, at the live events uh, you, you you just go continuously, and here you get to break it up uh, and. that to the travel and the hotel and that sort of stuff and I think that anybody that has the remote thought that um, this can help their business would be sort of crazy not to do it. Well thank you. I, I appreciate the sentiment. Um, I appreciate your your continued connection and support and I appreciate you saying it here where it can help me uh, make some sales. While, while I have you, um, Jim had a question. He said, please, please don't take this the wrong way. The approach seems very logical and different, maybe uncomfortably different. Have your students noticed a significant increase in results from their past ways? Any testimonials? My head says it should. So I, I realized that almost all my testimonials are like right after the event when everyone's jazzed and I say, how'd it go? And everyone says, oh, it's great. I love it. And I have not really followed up. I don't say really. I have not followed up. Um, so, so John, I'm going to you know put both of us on the spot here and say, has has it helped you? Um, well, if you recall, um, as as we were closing the the camp uh, checkmate, um, you went around and asked everybody what we what we got out of it, and one of the things that I got out of it was a totally different perspective on on. Um, looking at the business and looking at the prospects, absolutely, it's 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 um, helped me. It, you might have a little trouble putting a, a dollar value on it um, because, uh, well, uh, there's there's a quotation that I really love, and it, it's you pay for education once, you pay for ignorance forever. <laughs> um, so. Yes, it has absolutely helped me. I have benefited greatly, and I think the the greater benefit is the, the is the cost that I've avoided, uh, chasing the wrong clients, uh, being being um, being too general, uh, trying to be like everybody else, uh, just learning to be different. Um, I, I I don't know how you put a value on that, but right. it is well, invaluable. Thanks and. Jim, I don't know if that if that helps. So all I got at the moment. Um, so John, thanks so much for for, for jumping in. Uh, it's good. Sure, you're you're quite welcome. And and, and you know, um, I I really do um, feel very strongly about the, the the value here. And I think that you've improved it over what um, uh, what what we did at the live event. Well, good because I've I've been thinking about it a lot. So. <laughs> I know I've been moving in some direction. I'm uh, I'm glad to hear that you think it's a positive one. Yes, absolutely. Right. Well, uh, John, thank you. Tina, thank you. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging in. Um, I'm going to hang up the phone, leave the website up for another few minutes as a, as a little subliminal for everybody. And I got another couple of calls coming next Tuesday, again, 1 p.m. and 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Time, United States. And then the course starts the following Tuesday, November 6th. Oh, I didn't mention that's election day in the United States. So if anyone is um, going to be, you know, glued to uh, the TV or, or for any reason it's going to be um, impractical for you to attend, I'm also um, going to have the same. Going to have it at 1 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Thursday, the 8th. 
just that first time just to make sure that uh, the election day doesn't throw anybody because I think it's important that everyone show up for the first one. So here's one more question. The, web, the, the webinar is next Tuesday. One of them will be, um, probably the, the, the 1 p.m. one will be the basic checkmate where I'll just show, share the avatar and the matrix and get a volunteer to go through it. The one I'm thinking of doing at this time next week, um, I, I, I actually was thought of this while I was running yesterday morning, uh, the, the daily review. Um, it's about um, translating your prospect experience from negative thoughts and beliefs to empath empathic exploration. Um, I don't know more than that yet, but I'm, uh, I have a strong intuition that this will be a helpful exercise. Sometimes they're not. I've done exercises on these free webinars that have turned out to be duds, and so I end up not putting them into the, 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 the paid training. <laughs> That's another way you guys help me. But I, I have a good feeling about this one, and we'll, and we'll see. Are you going to send out emails to those of us who are, have, are on today's webinar? Um, for next oh. ones? Well, yeah. How does how does that? Yeah, if you signed up for this one, you're on you're on my list. Okay. Okay. So I'll good. I'll just I'll keep hammering away until you buy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll try. That's what they taught me. <laughs> um, as the Star Wars said, there is no try. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna sign off. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks so much.